Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome, my Aries friends, to the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot. I'm Zachary. Welcome to my table. Thank you for joining me here this week. So this is going to be your reading for November 6th through November 12th. I'm going to go ahead and just get started shuffling here for your animal totem for the week. Spirit, what do we have for Aries for November 6th through November 12th? While I'm shuffling, guys, thank you guys so much for your support. As always, I love you so much. Please, if this does resonate with you or you find something useful here, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Those are all great ways to support me. And um, I do have my Cash App and PayPal links in the description as well. If you feel like supporting me in that way directly, um, thank you so much and I love you. And if not, thank you for being here. I, I love you still, okay? So Spirit, what do we have for Aries for November 6th through 12th? Let's hope it's not a tower in the animal pile. <laughs> they have been going around, it seems. So you have the moose, wisdom. Let your head and mind reach to the stars, yet keep your feet grounded on the earth. Listen to the ancient wisdom in your soul. The ancestors speak through you. You know much. So I've definitely been doing a lot more work with my ancestors and my morning ritual. I would highly recommend, if you aren't already meditating, to start incorporating that into your daily routine and work your ancestors into what you're doing as well because they especially right now i feel they're trying to come through and help all of us because we need it <laughs> things are totes cray and um yeah that's just what i feel encouraged to say to you guys okay so i'm gonna get started here shuffling for your main read Spirit, what do we have for Aries for November 6th through November 12th? And then feel free to check out your rising moon and Venus signs as well, you guys. Your um, moon and Venus are going to be best if you're looking for love-specific information, your interior world, and then the way that you relate or connect to other people. So check it out. And welcome cross-watchers as well. All right. Okay, so to start here, we have Queen of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles, we've got Eight of Cups, Four of Pentacles, the Hermit, Knight of Pen or Knight of Swords, excuse me, Queen of Wands, and the Moon. Okay. And I am gonna go ahead and just start off here by clarifying all of these and then I'll get into the main read, okay? So how did everybody do getting through the eclipse and Halloween? <laughs> Any good costume contests? I know not everywhere in the world celebrates Halloween, but here in the States they do. All right. So Queen of Pentacles is clarified by King of Cups, Knight of Pentacles by Eight of Swords, Eight of Cups by Three of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles by Six of Cups, The Hermit by Queen of Wands, Knight of Swords by King of Pentacles, Queen of Wands by Page of Cups, and then the Moon by Ten of, or Ten of Wands, excuse me. Okay. See, at the bottom of the deck here, we have Five of Swords. So I do feel like some of you are wanting to win something. Like there's a hope for coming out on top for some reason, but this isn't in like a nice way. It's, kind of, it's winning at all costs, um, in which case nobody ends up really being the winner. So I'm curious what, what it is. I mean, maybe you guys are writing off of the energy from last month, needing to, or wanting to, needing to have some recharge time. Maybe you're just getting to that point of being very, I don't know. So Ace of Wands here, this is something that you're fearing. This is a new, a new start, like a new passionate start. That passion and drive that you need to start something wonderful. So I feel like you guys are struggling with, I feel like maybe you're angry about where you are and you want or need to start something new, but you're feeling fear surrounding that. So let's get into the main reading here. The energy you're coming into the month with is the Queen of Pentacles crossed by the King of Cups, or clarified by the King of Cups. The Queen of Pentacles is an individual who is generous, that talks about opulence, that talks about putting details into your life that you want to be there because you want them to be there. So, 
you are in a place or I'm getting from that is you're in a place where you want that. Maybe you're not feeling that control right now and you're working towards that. Being caused by the King of Cups, King of Cups is the master of their emotions. They are the, <laughs> the master of the motion of their emotion ocean. So what I'm getting from this is that I get kind of like a childlike, like a petulant energy from it. Those of you that this applies to, you're fed up with something. I want it and I want it, Daddy, and I want it now. There's something about like Bruca Salt from uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Fa Charlie, well, a lot Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, excuse me. So there's there is a, a need for you guys to get your emotions under control, and I don't know if this is you are outwardly displaying them or if you're keeping them to yourself. But there's a, there's something about you wanting something, you want your life a certain way, and I'm just getting kind of like a volatile, like throwing a fit kind of energy attached to that. Uh, I want to clarify that with an oracle card, please, spirit. That one flipped around. Whoop. Awakening, realization, shift, or discovery. So maybe something has happened. I get kind of, you know, along with this five of swords wanting to win at something and being afraid to start something new. Maybe you guys have come across a realization of swords. Maybe it's with your job, your family, friend group, your relationship, and it's just not sitting well with you. Like maybe they're restructuring at work. Maybe, um, yeah, the roles at work are shifting. Your responsibilities are shifting at home. Similarly, dynamics could be changing or with friends. And this is something that's making you guys feel really, really uncomfortable to the point where you're feeling like fighting back is what, <laughs> is what I'm getting from that. So let's move forward uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit further. The energy that's not important this week is the Knight of Pentacles crossed by the Eight of Swords. So Knight of Pentacles is an energy of, it's a slow and steady pace. Like this, this night is all about progress by being pragmatic, being persistent and consistent. They have a plan and they're seeing that plan through. The Eight of Swords talks about being trapped in your own, like being trapped in a, a prison of your own design. You feel like you're tied up, you feel like you're bound, but if you were to look closer, you would see that there's actually a way out. You're not actually tied up. You just feel like you're stuck. So what I'm getting from this is, what I'm getting from this is actually more to do with your work, for sure, for those of you that this applies to, that it is less important for you this week what I'm getting from this is whatever you're doing at work, like I feel like you're giving giving yourself to work. Or anything that is, it could be a relationship, a friendship, a relationship, but it's unbalanced. Like you, you are willing to put in this consistent work, but it's not being returned to you. And because of that, because you're not doing anything about appropriately reacting or responding to it, i.e. going somewhere else, getting another job, speaking up about how you're feeling or getting help with, the way that you're feeling, you're feeling stuck, but this feeling of stuckness is because you aren't allowing yourself to express yourself. And that's what I'm getting from this. Like you want to fight somebody and you want to win, but it's like a, it's gotten to the point where you're not, you're not very nice Aries right now. <laughs> um, so this is not, what is not important this week is for you to continue doing the same old, same old thing and continuing to tie yourself up over it. So we're going to start branching out of that energy this week. It's something, honestly, you guys, please stop putting yourself in those positions. Um, the song that comes to mind for me is, oh, what is the title? There's a line from it that says, speak and open up your mind. It's something you should do all the time. Surprise yourself. Uh, and I'm forgetting the artist right now, but the topic is, like you can surprise, surprise yourself, guys, do something that you're not used to doing. And in this situation, it's open, open up your mind and speak your truth. Stop stuffing it down for whatever reason. I don't know. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Can we get some clarification on the Knight of Pentacles and the Eight of Swords, please? This one right here. Fear. That's why. <laughs> Expecting the worst, afraid of failure, wasting time on negative thoughts. Okay, you guys, so listen. 
come here. <laughs> I, I do understand feeling fear around something and I understand letting it paralyze you too. And I've talked about fear a lot and I've, I've put it more in, in like your fear isn't real or 99% of the time it's not real. And I'm stepping away from saying that because it's not really what I'm trying to express. What I'm trying to express is that fear is not going to ever disappear in our lives. So the best thing to do is learn how to become friends with our fear, learn how to make fear work for us. Fear is like a, it's like a compass, really. It's a message just like any other emotion. And if you start learning that when fear is coming up, it's really something that you should lean into. There's a lot of growth and there's a lot of the time there's, there's a huge reward on the other side of it. For you challenging yourself to work through your fear, there's something that's typically like the opposite of what that fear is that's waiting for you on the other side. This is what I've learned anyway in my own life. And I have a feeling that this is, this is similar for a lot of people. So I'm just feeling... Like this is not, what is not important this week is to continue doing the same shit that you've been doing, okay? And that is putting yourself on the back burner. It's time to choose you, boo-boo. Like always, it's always time to choose you. But this week especially, with last month too, you guys are really feeling burnt out about stuff. And this, honestly, this kind of talks about it too. So this is the energy that is important. Eight of Cups, and then we've got the Three of Pentacles. Eight of Cups is leaving something behind or not leaving something behind. So either way, what it's telling me is there is a subject of you leaving, needing to leave something behind. It needs to happen. It's not happening. The Three of Pentacles talks about success through collaboration with others. It can also talk about getting a reward, you know, for, for working with others. Could be a, a like a bonus or a promotion, that sort of thing. So... What I'm getting from this, though, it's not it's not that there is a, a promotion or anything waiting. There is like on the on the wings spiritually for you. You guys got to leave dovetailing off of this. Leave, leave, leaving yourself behind. That's something that we're done doing, Aries. You deserve so much more. So, so much, so much more. Oh, my gosh. I just get this feeling of like breathlessness you guys are you guys are working so hard to hide how you're actually feeling that you're not even breathing stop doing that i'm gonna check up on you aries <laughs> so where this leads or what it's good for you've got the four of pentacles and the six of cups so four of pentacles talks about having your mind on your stability and your security your safety, especially through financial means. The Six of Cups is a card of nostalgia. It's could be someone for the past. It really, the part that usually stands out to me though is like, this is the inner child card for me. What I'm getting from this is because, because you are doing what you're doing, you're abandoning yourself, Aries. I'm just gonna get real right down to it, okay? That whole process of doing that, you're abandoning yourself, you guys. And that really makes me sad, I'm going to be honest. No matter who it is that's doing that. And it makes me sad because I spent a lot of my time in my life doing that to myself as well. And I will tell you from personal experience, what it did was destroy my inner child. Because that inner child is never going away. You know, we all grew up with the, the shit that we did and were affected in the ways that we were. I'm going to clarify this as well. And no one made it out of childhood not damaged okay our job as adults is to become healthy and secure enough to reparent that child to be the parent that our, our child actually needed and if you're not doing that then your child is continuing to throw a fit be hurt be angry and those are the emotions that are coming up that are asking you to listen that's your inner kiddo you guys and rightfully so, you know, like they deserve to be throwing the fit that they're they're throwing. They they need to feel safe and secure. And that's what I get from the four of pentacles and the, the inner child there. You leaving, abandoning yourself behind, the purpose of that is so that you can take care of your inner child and make them feel safe and secure. Creativity is what came out here. Have fun, express yourself in new ways to clarify that. You guys need to go have some fun. You know, <laughs> go have some damn fun. Go to the fair, 
get some cotton candy. You know what I mean? Figure out what is it that you love to do when you were a child and go and do that thing for your child. Talk to it, them, excuse me, it's not an item. Talk to them, ask them what they need. But you're, you're feeling the way that you're feeling right now because of your inner child. That is what I'm getting. Like your inner child feels like they've been punched in the gut. They've had something taken from them over and over and over again. And that is their own right to exist. Stop doing that to yourself, Aries. You deserve so much more, my gosh. So the challenge for you this week is the Hermit and the Queen of Wands. And the Hermit talks about finding truth on the inside, finding that guiding light that you need on the inside through meditation. It could be through isolation, but it's through solitude mostly. You don't have to go you know, rent a cabin in the woods <laughs> and stay there on your own. You can, that helps. I like that. But the Queen of Wands is an individual of great exuberance. She is creative and passionate and she is generous in that, in giving that energy of herself, just emanating that energy so others can benefit from it because she's so comfortable with that within herself. What I'm getting from this, the challenge for you, the challenge for you is going to be going inside, listening, getting to a point where you are listening to that kiddo. What I feel is that you guys are, are so used to taking care of other people. And you're so wonderful, Aries. You are, I would say is the way I put, you're the child, you're the you're the child of the zodiac in that you teach us how to properly be that child. And if you're struggling to do that for yourself, then I mean, forget other people. That's not why I'm saying that. You are you're going against your own design. Like that little kiddo needs to come out and be bright and bubbly. That's you. And if you're not feeling bright and bubbly, like I get things go on in life. I'm dealing with my own things right now. And it's harder for me to be bright and bubbly. But I am also aware and taking care of what my my little Zachary needs, my little bubby. So this is your challenge this week, is getting in touch with little Aries and giving them what they need, validating them. I see that you're feeling this way or you're feeling that way. You're crying. What's going on? Let me hold you. Visualize these things, you guys. This, this stuff matters because you matter. You matter to me. And I want you to matter to you too. Okay. So um, I do want to clarify that card there. Or those cards, excuse me. Queen of Wands and the Hermit, please. And I did, those of you that have, have been watching me, I did change up my set a little bit here. <laughs> Got some cool lights, so love to get some input on how you feel about it. I'm going to keep this, keep this going, but this is the new set. Abundance, an inflow of money, love, or rewards. So what I'm getting from that is needing, needing to bring that abundance, that inflow of love and rewards to yourself. That is going to be a challenge for you this week. But I challenge you to do it anyway. You may not be feeling like doing it, but do it. It's the times when we don't feel like doing something or that are the hardest for us to do it that they matter the most. Look at like going to the gym, those days that you don't want to go, those are the days that are the most important because those are the days where you really have to dig deep and show up for yourself. When you do that though, you show to yourself and the more that you do that, you show yourself your value, you guys. That's your, that's your abundance and inflow of, of love and rewards. You have to bring that to yourself and that then will start coming to you as well. Magnetize towards you. That's how that works. And I know you know this too. This is just a reminder. Okay. So your blessing for the week is Knight of Swords and King of Pentacles. Knight of Swords is an individual who is running towards their goals. They can also be. Knight of Swords is the quickest knight in all of the kingdom. <laughs> what I'm getting from the Knight of Swords that's important about this is, is somebody who is like coming in to save you. Because the Knight of Swords can be a defender as well. 
And the King of Pentacles talks about being a very generous, wealthy individual. And this wealth typically is financially. Um, it could be a wealth of knowledge, particularly surrounding finances. But what I'm getting from this is as your blessing, as your blessing for the week, this individual, for most of you, this is you. I mean, for all of you, I would say this is you. You are the one who needs to come in and be your own defender. You have to, you have to shower yourself with your own abundance, your own wealth of knowledge. And you guys know, you know what you need to do for yourself because your little kid knows. So that, that is the main message of what's going on here so far is you need to get in touch with that little child. They are screaming for attention right now and rightfully so because they need it and they deserve it. Children are to be seen and heard. Okay. So get down, get inside and listen to what's going on. I feel like for some of you, there could be some, maybe it's you watching this video. Now there is somebody who's coming like swooping in to help you. Maybe there's a friend who's reminding you, like I said here, that's reminding you of your value, Aries. We forget sometimes. I do understand that. And if you've forgotten, hey, again, come here. You are valuable. You are a high value person. Don't forget it. Your inner child may forget that, but you as the adult, you need to remember that. And if you do forget sometimes, it's okay. That's why we surround ourselves with people or friends and family who care about us and love us enough to remind us. So that's what I'm getting from this, you guys, is that there's, there's help on the way. And that help ultimately is going to come from you. But if you need a spark, it could be me that's giving you that here. But there's somebody who's going to come in and help. They're not going to solve your problems, but they're going to help give you the strength. Maybe reignite that spark that you need to get going. Be open to change. Be receptive to new experiences. Change leads to growth. So I do feel like a lot of you are feeling stuck and you've been stuck for so long that it's easy for you to just continue to stay there. So I'm challenging you to get up and move. The Knight of Swords too, like I said, that's the high, that's the fastest moving energy. They're, they're coming in with a vengeance. So treat yourself like that. Open yourself up so ferociously to change. That change has to come in, okay? This is going to be the energy that's blocked that needs to be cleared for the week. You've got Queen of Wands and Page of Cups. And you had Queen of Wands as the challenge portion as well. So again, Queen of Cups is that vibrant, passionate, creative, bubbly energy. This is absolutely blocked inside of you. Because your child is having issues, feeling seen, they're feeling scared. There's a security issue, you guys. There's stability. There is an issue. So the energy that needs to be unblocked here is you, is your natural energy, that natural bubbly drive. I feel like a lot of you are on the other side of the Mars energy right now, which is anger, passion in the form of like fighting and war rather than fun. And this is, you're being asked to unblock this and that takes getting in touch with little kiddo. Page of Cups here talks about a new relationship. This individual is a dreamer. There's an overwhelm of emotion that comes with the start of this relationship as well. And the relationship that I feel like is starting is with your kiddo. I think for some of you guys, maybe you've never heard this before, or maybe you've never started that process of actually doing inner child work. If that's the case, this is your shine. Here's your shine, <laughs> Aries, to get started on that. Honestly, it is... It is the bee's knees, you guys. And I don't mean it as like a, like a delicious treat. <laughs> Great, let's do it, maybe not. This is vital, absolutely vital to your ability to turn into a person who used to survive that gets to thrive. That relationship that you have with that inner child is crucial to your success as a human being. So don't let it go. Don't keep pushing it down. You are worth it, okay? You're worth it. Now, the energy that you need in order to achieve the highest success here, you've got the moon and then the Ten of Wands. And the moon talks about what's hidden, secrets, emotions, 
the dark side of emotions that are buried deep. And the Ten of Wands talks about leaving something kind of like the Eight of Cups, leaving something behind, dropping a burden, dropping something that's heavy. So there's something going on emotionally. <laughs> it's probably your kid. I don't know if you heard me earlier. That's where a lot of our, our dark emotions come from, you guys. The darker side of who we are is attached to components of ourselves in childhood that were shunned. Somebody, probably your parents, maybe a parent's friend, someone in the family shunned a component of ourselves and we decided to keep shunning that too because we kind of had to. You survived by learning through you know, your family group. So you're being asked to let this go. Just let it go. I'm going to pull clarification here. Twin flame, spiritual connection between you and your twin flame. And I had, who on all is this? I think it was, oh, I can't remember the sign, but anyway, I thought about taking it out because um, the twin flame card. <laughs> What I'm getting from this is that those of you that whether you have a twin flame or not, now is not the time to be focusing on it, okay? Maybe you had an encounter with them in the past and it didn't work out. It's okay to let it go. You need to let it go in order to tap into that energy of the emotion that's very deep that you need to take care of here. Let that go. It's all wrapping up to you guys need to focus on yourself, okay? And that was a message that was coming through a lot for last month as well. All right, Aries, I love you. Thank you so much for joining me here this week. And I will see you next week. Have a great week.